Thank you for coming. Thank you for being here. So maybe we start with some meditation. So let's gather our attention as we settle into our meditation seat. And take a few deep breaths to just let go of memories of the day or fantasies about what's going to come next. Taking an upright posture. Settling into relaxation, grounded and still. Now allow your awareness to come to your crown and then scan down through your body, releasing and softening whatever tension might appear to the mind's eye. Slowly going down through the body. All your facial muscles succumb to gravity. And your shoulders release. As you come down your arms and feel your hands resting gently in your lap. and coming to the base of the neck and allowing awareness to begin to descend through the torso, the upper back softens and releases the chest, down to the mid back. all the way to your sit bones. Softening any tightness or tension, letting your belly be soft to receive the full breath. And flowing down your legs, past your knees, all the way to the soles of your feet and the tips of your toes. Let your whole body, every cell, release and relax. and turning our attention to the breath in the body, the sensation as the body breathes.
when you have some sense of stability. Follow the breath closely, aware of the sensation of the breath at the nostrils as it flows out and back in again. Not forcing or impeding in any way, just breathing naturally. Notice the turning points and taste the quality of stillness, the pause as the breath turns. See if you can feel, even for just a moment, that you're touching upon that quality of inner stillness, the innate stillness of the space of the mind. Just the breath. Our attention is infinitely renewable. So when the mind gets carried away, when you notice, return to center, back to the breath again, gently. Patiently, without fighting against the chattering thinking mind, not fighting against memories or expectations, we begin to develop an attitude of kindness and acceptance toward them. And in doing so, we come to know that a thought is just a thought. We find ourselves clinging, we return to the center, we begin again. That's the practice.
resting evenly in present moment awareness with the breath as our anchor. So by way of motivation, I'd like to turn to gratitude. Yesterday morning, before sitting, having made offerings and marveled at the photos of my lamas, I was gazing out my gompa window and my heart was so full of gratitude. To begin, our practice with gratitude is so beautiful. I have heard some say that they have nothing to be grateful for. They're depressed or anxious. Their car's not reliable. Their dog's unruly. Their children misbehave. They don't have any money to pay their bills. They have too much work to do. No one washes their dishes. They've gained too much weight. They bemoan the destruction of our planet, how people are consumed with hatred. There's gun violence and destruction. There's war. How is it that there seems to be more and more natural disasters? Famine, drought, mudslides, tsunamis, wildfires, hurricanes. And depending on where the camera focuses, there's a lot of truth in that. I recently had tea with a friend and in our conversation, he mentioned that someone told him he should be more grateful. He should think more about gratitude. He asked them why they thought so. They explained that if he suffered from depression, it might make him happier. He wondered if and how that was so, confessing to me that he didn't really know what gratitude was. Perhaps he just didn't recognize it. Gratitude is defined by Webster as appreciation for something of value. And this appreciation seems to give rise to a warm heartedness, which might be called happiness. Happiness is literally defined as a state of well being, contentment. It stands to reason that if we focus on what we have in our lives that we value, enough food, shelter, clothing, and in some cases, loving partners or pets, and so much more. We can't help but be grateful when our lives are filled with them. When I was in three-year retreat, I wrote a poem entitled Gratitude. It goes like this. We must each one find our inspiration that which lifts us to heaven. Sun shining, flowers blooming, bells chiming, flies buzzing, juncos tweeting, blue jays squawking, owls hooting, mockingbirds laughing, robins singing, woodpeckers drilling, 
ravens cawing, hummingbirds humming, chickadees chirping, turkeys gobbling, hawks squeaking, warblers warbling, finches cheeping, frogs croaking, bees swarming, crickets cheering, squirrels fussing, love blossoming. A symphony of spring in the emerald forest. We might wonder why gratitude and appreciation don't arise, even when the physical causes seem to be present. It's a good question. Could it be because gratitude is in the mind rather than in outside circumstances? Could it be because we haven't trained to look, to see, to take in and appreciate the value of what we have here, now? So I invite you now to take a moment to allow the light of gratitude to warm your heart for the gift of Dharma you have been given and cultivate a wish that you might bring freedom to all beings without exception. Those you love, those you have yet to meet, and those whose mere name makes it difficult to conjure equanimity. So allow your awareness to drop into your heart center and see a small sphere of warm light there, this light of love. Love wishing the beloved to have happiness and all of its causes. Conjoining this meditation with the breath, as you inhale, allow that light to become energized. And as you exhale, allow it to expand. Let it begin to fill your torso. And extending to the extremities. All the way to your crown. Let it be an inner warmth of loving kindness. And as it continues to expand, becoming uncontainable, allow it to pass through your pores. In all directions. And let it light on those you love. Taking away all the obstacles to happiness. And giving them exactly what each needs.
and allowing your awareness to expand out of that circle. And to go to those whom you might meet regularly in your life, but you don't know them by name. Perhaps the bank teller. Or the clerk at the grocery store. Or that homeless person in the same place every day. Take away the obstacles to their happiness, knowing that just like you, they long for happiness and freedom from suffering. And then go beyond this circle and bring to mind those, as Chodun Rinpoche used to say, those who give you a headache. And see them before you, recognizing that just like you, they have joys and sorrows. And just like you, they long for happiness and freedom from suffering. And yet covered by the fog of ignorance, they engage in activities that bring suffering to themselves and to others. Allow your heart to open to them. Removing the causes of their suffering. And offering them the causes of happiness. And allowing this loving light to go beyond, beyond this whole world, out into the universe, to the multiplicity of universes. Let it expand out as far as imagination will allow to encompass all the world, all the universes. In all directions, Let your awareness be free, filled with love. And then gradually, like breath on a mirror, begin to gather back this light. Slowly it comes back until it is the size of the world. And then back in, smaller and smaller, until it's the size of your room. And the size of your body. And then smaller and smaller, until there it rests right there at the center of your heart, this warmth, this warm heartedness.
And as we shine our light of love to all beings throughout the universe, with gratitude and with wisdom, we hold them all dear. And allow your heart to feel your body, your mind. What does it feel like to have this kind of gratitude, this kind of love, this kind of appreciation? Oh, wonderful. Okay, good. Coming back into this room. So we have been discussing the three levels of faith, yeah? Defined faith as complete trust or confidence in someone or something. The three levels of admiring faith, which arises from being inspired by a teacher or a teaching. And then the second level, aspiring faith, aspiring to attain that state of being to which we have become inspired and believing that we have the potential to do so. And the third level is unshakable faith. Unshakable this is the faith of conviction. We can't be swayed from this state because it's grounded in reason and understanding. So that requires us to, as Buddha said, investigate, explore, examine, not to take whatever it is that arises from a teaching or a teacher or the words of the Buddha, not to accept just because it's been said, but to probe it, to examine it, until we have in our heart a true realization of the truth of that. And that, once we have this unshakable faith, we can't be swayed by a new teaching, a new teacher, a new spiritual path. If we were to write our spiritual story, how we came to this path, like writing any story, the outline would include the same, the characters, generally a conflict and a resolution. So what plot? plot, a mystery, an archaeological dig, looking for inner peace, not just sometimes, but all the time, regardless of the inevitable ups and downs of life. Where is this peace? This is solving the great mystery. And then there's the setting. What is the setting? The setting is the mind. Mind being defined as naked awareness. Empty, spacious, and pure from the beginning. Like space, open, boundless. Always here. You don't have to make it up. Our world manifests to us from the habits of our own mind. Our happiness and suffering are in the mind. Our peace is in the mind. Okay, so the plot is peace of mind and the setting is the mind. So who are the characters? Who are the characters in this spiritual story? We could say very simply, the characters are ever-changing. They're ever-changing, interdependent manifestations 
which I call my own triple gem, me, myself, and I. And also there are others. Well, I write myself into the story. I write the others into the story and I believe in them. These are the characters. So what is the conflict? In most stories, there's a problem or a conflict to be solved. What's our problem? We're looking for peace of mind and we have all these characters. So what's our problem? Our problem is our failure to understand how we exist and how others exist. And this failure allows us to act and react with emotions when they arise in our mind, like anger, or greed, hatred, envy, and all the rest. We believe that the characters, their characteristics, and our reactive states are real. We've been totally sucked in. We don't realize that it's just our story. And right now we can see how our story plays out in very disturbing ways. So what's the resolution in our story? How do we resolve this conflict? How do we solve the problem? We cultivate wisdom. We cultivate the wisdom that understands how reality truly exists. We cultivate the wisdom that understands that the story is just a story. That we and our characters are not real. We're not solid, independent, concrete, unchanging, permanent characters. Life is a process of ever-changing manifestations of the infinite possibilities of the emptiness. Initially, this wisdom is intellectual. It's a hypothesis. But over time, with investigation, we develop unshakable faith. To solve the mystery in our story, we must unveil the mistaken view. We believe we know, but we've got it wrong. His Holiness calls ignorance a misknowing. We think we know, but we've got it wrong. To solve the conflict, we investigate how it is that ignorance keeps us from our goal of this immutable happiness. And that's our spiritual story. In Varanasi, Shakyamuni Buddha told his disciples, this is how it looks to me. Examine it, explore it, Investigate how your mind fabricates its experience of the world. See it clearly and free the heart from confusion about it. That's our job. To see through the veil, we have to pause. Otherwise, we continue to circle, creating that eddy we meditated on last week. This continual circle of debris, collecting, collecting, collecting the debris. But when we stop and really look, as it says in the complete path written by His Holiness the Seventh Dalai Lama, when we look at the root of things, emptiness is clearly understood. And this we do the next month when we meditate on the mind, then there will be more time to pause, more time to pause and probe.
and look to see. I always think about uh, the Wizard of Oz. You know, they had all these ideas about the wizard. And when they got to Oz, you know, and they pulled back the veil, they saw that the wizard was not so scary after all. You know? And in the same way, you know, when we pull back the veil, we see, you know, that our triple gem is like, cannot be found. You know? That really solid sense of me, myself, and I cannot be found. And that is really, um, that's freedom. That's really freedom. Because then you're not led around like a bull with a ring in his nose. You're free to then behave in ways that bring happiness, peace. And all of the practices that we have in one way or another, if we really look, we can see that they lead us to these various states that bring happiness. So let's engage in a practice, Lama Tsongkhapa Guru Yoga and enjoy. Does everyone have that practice? I'm putting it to the chat. Thank you. So as we begin to allow our hearts to soften and open with a sense of gratitude for having met the path that leads to freedom and a strong determination to remain vigilant, remain present as we practice so that we can reap the benefit of the practice, not just the words not just reciting from the lips, but reciting from the heart. So let's surround ourselves by all sentient beings and feel that we're actually leading them in this practice with a wish for them to be free. And we call our Lama. Oh, please come, great. Hero, the teacher of beauty, creation, destruction, self arisen, the wisdom of emptiness, and that of. So now think, because of your prayer, that your Lama appears before you as Shakyamuni Buddha, his holy body made of light, seated upon a lion throne, smiling. Feeling close to them. feeling they care about us. And we lead all the sentient beings in the practice of refuge, the bodhicitta. I go for refuge until enlightenment to the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha by my virtuous actions of giving and so on. May I become a Buddha to benefit all beings. I go for refuge until enlightenment to the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha 
by my virtuous actions of giving and so on. May I become a Buddha to benefit all beings. I go for refuge until enlightenment to the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha by my virtuous actions of giving and so on. May I become a Buddha to benefit all beings. May all beings have equanimity, free of attachment and aversion. May all beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May all beings be free of suffering and the causes of suffering. May all beings find good rebirths and the bliss of liberation. I will help us to have these. Please, Guru Buddha, bless me to be able to do this. May the ground everywhere be pure, free of roughness and all flaws, soft as the palm of a child's hand, smooth as polished blue sapphire. May all space with Samantabhadras, clouds of offerings be filled, offerings human and divine, both actual and imagined. And then we expand these offerings to fill all of space. Om Namo Bhagavate Vajrasara Paramadana Tathagataya Arhate Samyak Sambuddhaya Tayata Om Vajre Vajre Maha Vajre Maha Teja Vajre Maha Vidya Vajre Maha Bodhi Chida Vajre Maha Bodhi Mandopasam Kramana Vajrasara Kramana Vishodana Vajre Soha Om Namo Bhagavate Vajrasarga Parmadana Tathagataya Arhate Samyak Sambuddhaya Tayata Om Vajre Vajre Maha Vajre Maha Teja Vajre Maha Vidya Vajre Maha Bodhi Chita Vajre Maha Bodhi Mando Pasam Kramana Vajra Sarva Karma Avarana Vishodana Vajre Soha Om Namo Bhagavate Vajrasarva Parmadana Tathagataya Arhate Samyak Sambuddhaya Tayata Om Vajre Vajre Maha Vajre Maha Teja Vajre Maha Vidya Vajre Maha Bodhi Chita Vajre Maha Bodhi Mando Pasam Kramana Vajre Sarva Karma Avarana Vishodana Vajre Soha So now imagine that your Lama is Shakyamuni Buddha is totally pleased and he melts into light and dissolves into you as you now invoke Lama Tsongkhapa. Feel the blessing of your Lama Shakyamuni Buddha within you. You who emanate on snow white clouds from the heart of Buddha Maitreya, Savior of hundred joyful Deva realm, the song drug all knowing king of. Dharma with your two heart disciples, I beseech you, please come before me. In space on lion throne, lotus and moon, my kind guru smiling with delight. Is the supreme field for my faithful mind? Please forever abide and teach us. 
Your holy mind knows all phenomena. Your fluent speech a sweet melody. For the ears of fortunate beings, your form resplendent with fame's glory. I prostrate to you who is meaningful to see here and also bring to mind. Pure waters and well-arranged flowers, fragrant incense, lights, perfume, and more. Clouds of offerings, real and imagine, I offer you supreme merit healed. Non-virtues of body, speech, and mind transgressions of my three sets of vows committed since beginning last time all i confess deeply from my In these times of degeneration, you made your life highly meaningful. Renounced all the eight worldly concerns, strove for knowledge and realizations. In your extensive accomplishments, I rejoice deeply within my heart. Lama in Dharmakaya's clear sky, from clouds of wisdom and compassion. These rain down vast and profound dharma upon us fortunate disciples. I dedicate all of these virtues to the dharma, all living beings and Especially that the hard teachings of Lo Song Drakpa remain forever. Of this ground scented. With flowers adorned by Mount Meru, four worlds, sun and moon, I imagine as a Buddha land, and then offer it. May all beings enjoy this pure land. I send forth this jeweled mandala to you, my precious guru. So now we see Tsongkhapa and his two heart disciples are smiling at us, pleased with our prayers, our offerings, our confession. And from their hearts, beams of light flow forward. They merge into one stream 
and they enter through the top of our head. And this is happening to all the sentient beings who surround us at the same time. And it washes away all sicknesses, all interferences, all defilements and negative karma. And our body becomes filled with blissful light as we recite the five line prayer to Lan Matsongkapa. Chen raise a great treasure of objectless compassion. Manju Shri Lord of stainless wisdom. Vajrapani Destroyer of Mara's eyes. Tsongka Pa Crown Jewel of Tibetan Sages. Lo Sang Drag Pa to you. Nigme se we te chen chen lazy. Dream can pay wang po jump yang. Do po ma lu. Jom ze sang weda Gam chen ke pe tu gyan tsong ka pa Lo sang drag pe jav la so Nigme se we te chen chen raise. Dream can be wong po jump yang. Do pu ma lu jom ze. beautiful, purifying white light filling our body. And then we ask to receive the Guru's blessing. Oh, magnificent and Precious root guru, please abide on the lotus and moon seat above my head. Guide me with your great kindness and grant me realizations of your holy body, speech, and mind. And so now imagine that the two disciples dissolve into Lama Tsongkhapa. His holy body is made of light. Our guru and the aspect of Lama Tsongkhapa then comes to the crown of our head and sends down a rain of blessings 
purifying our body with Om, our speech with Ah, and our mind with Hum. Oh. Oh. Let it all together. Oh, ma, oh, ma, And then think, may I be inspired by guru devotion, uplifted by the preciousness of this human life. May I shed the fetters of attachment and aversion through a knowledge of impermanence. May I be protected by refuge, guided by knowledge of actions and their results. May I aim for liberation through renunciation. May I be motivated by bodhicitta, opened by giving, disciplined by ethical behavior, strengthened by patience, enthused by joyous effort, stabilized by concentration. And finally, may I be freed by wisdom, realizing the final nature, how things actually exist. Oh, magnificent and precious root guru, please abide on the lotus and moon seat at my heart. Guide me with your great kindness and stay with me always until I achieve enlightenment. And so now Lama Tsongkhapa melts into light, this small sphere descends down through our crown, gradually coming to our heart center, blessing our mind. And rest there. Body, speech, and mind purified. Having received the blessings of the entire sutra path to enlightenment. Make a strong determination to see through the veil. Resting in even present moment awareness in naked awareness like the open sky.
empty. Spacious and pure from the beginning. Union oneness with Lama Tsongkhapa's holy mind. Like a mirror, this mind reflects everything. Appearances are relative reality. Ultimate reality is empty. And within this empty space, we once again crystallize into our bodhisattva bodies to be an agent of kindness. And let's continue with the seventh Dalai Lama's complete path. Understanding this is understanding the three principal aspects of the path. As we recite these, see if you can parse out when it shifts from renunciation to bodhicitta to wisdom. Whatever you want for yourself and others with a human form is easily attained. Disengage yourself from meaningless efforts. Strive to accomplish the highest goals. Because all things composite are impermanent, life changes and never abides. That change is the basis of suffering. For the samsaric mind fills with frustration on watching its creations continually fade. The higher you climb in samsara, the higher the cliff on which you perch. The more things you own, the tighter you are bound. The dearer you hold someone, the greater the chance they will hurt you. The faster you subdue enemies, the faster their numbers increase. This body is a thing borrowed for the moment. And possessions are things stored for others. Now we dally with them, but quickly are they lost and misused. Therefore, and only are sources of misery. Therefore, no worldly possession is worth the effort of gaining. Turn your back on that which only handicaps. An unburdened mind is joy supreme. The pinnacle of aims is to follow this path. Body, speech, and mind kept stainless with pure self-discipline. Mind held in samadhi, blissful and clear. 
and wisdom seeing all realities of every situation. The mother beings wandering in the six realms, to me, their child, are pieces of my heart. For many times have they soothed my troubles and in infinite ways have they brought me joy. These infinite beings so kind are covered by the fog of ignorance. Constantly lashed by whips of delusions, they have no chance to lay down the burden of misery from their minds. Therefore, whenever you meet anyone, greet them with eyes smiling with love. Why mention that you shouldn't even consider holding evil intentions or deceptive thoughts? the way people and things seem to be, other than projected labels, is a distortion created by a deluded mind. If we look at the root of things, emptiness is clearly understood. And in the vast space of the perception of emptiness, mental grasping for the ultimate subsides. Then one looks into the face of the world Everything is seen without essence. Understanding interdependence, we understand emptiness. Understanding emptiness, we understand interdependence. This is the view which is the middle and which is beyond the terrifying cliffs of eternalism, nihilism, neither or both. So as Lama Tsongkhapa says, we cultivate these three principal aspects of the path. We cultivate this wish to be free, this definite emergence or renunciation by contemplating the leisure and endowment so difficult to find and the fleeting nature of this life. Then, we reverse the clinging to this life. And by cult cultivating the effects of karma and the miseries of cyclic existence, we release the clinging to future lives. And he says, in this way, when you have realized the exact points, when you have, in this way, mm, when you have day and night, the mind aspiring for liberation, then you have generated the determination to be free. I long for the time when I'm dreaming <laughs> the wish to be free <laughs> day and night. <laughs> and then he says, uh, but mm, if your determination to be free is not sustained by the pure dedicated heart, it doesn't become the cause to receive the perfect bliss of unsurpassed enlightenment. Therefore the intelligent generate the supreme thought of enlightenment, bodhicitta. And then he explains how to do that. He says, swept by the current of the four powerful rivers, tied by the strong bonds of karma that are so hard to undo, caught in the iron net of self-grasping egoism, completely enveloped in the darkness of ignorance, born and reborn in boundless cyclic existence, unceasingly tormented by the three miseries, the suffering of suffering, the suffering of change and all pervasive compounded suffering. By thinking of all mother sentient beings in this condition, generate the determination to be free. Bodhicitta, this wish to reach enlightenment in order to free all beings. But he goes on to say that even if you meditate on the determination to be free and the mind of enlightenment, without the wisdom, realizing the final nature, how things actually exist, you can't cut the root of cyclic existence. Therefore, strive to realize dependent arising. So he who sees the infallible cause and effect of cyclic existence and beyond, and destroys the false perception of their inherent existence or non-existence has entered the path which pleases the Buddha. 
So when you have realized the exact points of the three principal aspects of the path by depending on solitude, generate the power of joyous effort and quickly accomplish the final goal, my child. So we're always encouraged, encouraged to take some time to meditate, to think about these things. And when we do, they become part of our part of our being. Just like cultivating gratitude. Where do we put our pointer? That's what appears. I think it was William, jo William James who said, that to which we attend in the moment becomes our reality. So we cultivate a reality that we want by habituating our mind in virtue. So let's uh, dedicate these, this time that we've spent together with Master Shanti Deva's beautiful prayer. May all beings everywhere, plagued by sufferings of body and mind, find an ocean of happiness and joy by virtue of my merit. May no living creature suffer, commit evil or ever fall ill. May no one be afraid or belittled with a mind weighed down by depression. May the blind see forms, the deaf hear sounds. May those whose bodies are worn with toil be restored on finding repose. May the naked find clothing, the hungry find food. May the thirsty find water and delicious drinks. May the poor find wealth, those weak with sorrow find joy. May the forlorn find hope, constant happiness and prosperity. May there be timely rains and bountiful harvests. May all medicines be effective and wholesome prayers bear fruit. May all who are sick and ill quickly be freed from their ailments. Whatever diseases there are in the world, may they never occur again. May the frightened cease to be afraid and those bound be freed. May the powerless find power and may people think of benefiting each other as long as space remains as long as sentient beings remain there too may i remain to dispel the misery of the world by merit of this virtue May I become Buddha and lead all beings, everyone, into that enlightened state. May the precious body mind not yet born arise and grow, and may that born not decline, but increase more and more. You can take a moment to think about all of our lamas praying for their long life. Most especially, we think of His Holiness the Dalai Lama. In the snowy mountain paradise, you're the source of all happiness and good. Powerful Tenzin Gyatso Chenrezig, please remain until samsara ends. 
Savior of the snowlands, teachings and beings, you clarify the path that unifies emptiness and compassion. Lotus holder Tenzin Gyatso, may all your wishes be spontaneously fulfilled. And Lama's burn the check. Great upholder of the moral way, bountiful bearer of everything good, accomplishing beautiful prayers, honoring the three precious jewels, sustaining and spreading Buddha. Words, Kyab Jesopa Rimpoche, our precious Lama, please live long. And Tenzin Osalhita, venerable one to you whose kindness exceeds that of all the conquerors for those wanderers in far off places, especially the West. Mindful of your loving concern for us in intentionally descending again into a family of a far distant land, we make this request. O oh, Lama, please, please live long. And dear Geshe Sherab, Beloved teacher leading your students toward wisdom and compassion, explaining through exacting discernment the steps of the graduated path. You are the unequaled guide. Please live a long and stable life. And you can think about all of the teachers that we have had throughout our life. Letting our hearts be filled with gratitude for their presence. You can think of those on our prayer lists. May those who have passed away have fortunate reapers. May those who are unwell be healed. thinking of those in our own personal family, in our own circle of friends who are unwell, suffering in some way, dedicate to their well-being. to those suffering from the horrors of war, both the victims and the perpetrators. May they be free of seeing this in their world. May all the rulers around the world rule enlightened politics, thinking about others. May we ourselves, quicker than quick, fulfill our highest potential. Right. So do you have any questions or comments, anything? We have, we're a little early, <laughs> but that's okay, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, thank you for coming on this Easter day, Passover. You know?
whatever we're celebrating at this time all over the world. It's a special time, isn't it? Time to be on a spiritual journey. So, yeah. Grateful, grateful for all the paths leading to happiness and freedom from suffering. All right, my dear friends. <laughs> Next week, we have one more class on faith, yeah? And uh, at least one more class uh, for that. And then I think the next month, it's morning, morning meditation. Mahamudra, nine, I think, not, is it nine? Nine to, I think it's nine to 10.30, something like that. But for five weeks, we're going to engage in Mahamudra meditation. So awesome. <laughs> maybe you'll be able to join. <laughs> it's good for us, you know. It's good for us to sit. We sit through the boredom, you know, on beyond to see what we might find there. <laughs> Very exciting. <laughs> okay, dears, be well. Be well. Take Thanks good care. Me.